Hey guys, Faith in the house tonight. Um, wow, it's been a week, probably a little bit over a week since I've been on live stream. And so what's happening, y'all? What's happening? <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'm going to start us off with prayer. The devil is mad. Um, just simply because we are about to enter into the promised land. There are some big things that are coming up. Um, and I'm just going to pray over this broadcast right now. I just plead the blood of Jesus over um, every word that I'm about to speak right now. I declare the enemy is defeated right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> no weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. Every assignment that was assigned to us from hell, I cast it down in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I just put on the full armor of God upon myself and upon every single person listening at the sound of my voice. I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I put on the belt of truth. I put on the shoes of peace. Um, I take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and the, um, helm the, um, the shield of uh, faith, which will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one in Jesus' name. Father God, I just pray that the spirit of wisdom will come upon me and upon every person here. I just pray for the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, um, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of might. Um, will just come upon every single person heavily right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father God, let every word that I speak only come from your Holy Spirit and not of myself in Jesus' name. And then, all right, let me uh, share this real quick. Um, give me just a second here. I'm going to like... Let me, uh, share this. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, then we can get started. Um, okay, so the devil's kind of like doing a lot of things right now. There's a lot of things the devil is trying to do. Um, the devil's trying to sabotage my blessings. Um, he's trying to make me believe in lies that are not even true. Um, also, the devil's trying to put division between me and between people that um, I used to do ministry with, people that um, I, who were my great friends and all this kind of stuff or whatever. Um, but the devil is a liar. Um, and I just want to just say right now that, um, you know, everything that I post um, strictly is, has to do with the Word of God and me teaching the Word of God. And um, people, I mean, you know, they're always going to take it the wrong way, whatever. I don't care. You know what? If you're going to take it the wrong way, you know, it's not really my issue. It's something that you need to figure out with God yourself, you know. Um, but um, there are some people that think that um, I am only preaching things because I'm just coming against certain people or whatever. That is not the case. That's not where my heart is at. I'm strictly teaching the Word of God from my devotionals from what God is showing me, teaching um, strictly from the Word of God. Um, and it has nothing to do with me trying to offend anyone. Um, I am not offended at anyone. I'm not hurt at anybody. Um, so I just thought I would just um, clear the air with that. Um, and so, um, anyways, all right. So I'm actually going to talk about John chapter 3 today. And Father God, I just pray that I would be filled entirely with your Holy Spirit. And um, this is like the new birth. Um, you know, this is Jesus talking about eternal life, how we can attain eternal life. Um, and this was actually one of the Pharisees. His name was Nicodemus, right? And Nicodemus, he was like a ruler of the Jews. And Pharisees were like very much so the religious people. They would, I, I would consider them like the Catholic people um, who were very much so like they were, they believed in works. Um, but they actually, um, you know, they didn't accept Jesus Christ himself. Um, they didn't accept the grace of God and they didn't, they didn't believe in him. Um, and so, um, uh, they actually did not serve God himself. They served actually the devil without knowing it because of a religious spirit. Um, and so basically this guy, Nicodemus, he hiddenly, like, you know, he didn't want anyone to know that he was going to Jesus, but he went to Jesus himself and he was like, 
basically going to Jesus in the middle of the night and saying, um, I know that you're a teacher and you come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless, okay, okay, so check this out. Jesus said, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. So it's interesting how he's saying, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus was asking him, he was confused. He was like, how can a man be born when he is old? Because obviously he was older. So he was like, can you enter in the second time of your mother's womb? Like, how does that work? How does this born again thing actually work? Jesus answered and he said, unless one is born of water, and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So basically what he's talking about here um, is like baptism. He's basically saying, um, unless you were born of the water and the Holy Spirit, you know, when a, ba when a um, pastor actually um, puts you down into the water and then pulls you back up, um, you are supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hi, Nicole, how's it going? Good to see you. Um, and so basically, um, he is, um, I know I miss you too. I miss you so much. Bless you. Um, so he's basically saying that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So flesh is basically your fleshly um, desires, you know, um, it's, it's not of God, basically. Um, and he says, what is spirit is spirit. So the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. So all those things are the spirit. So he says, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. He says, the wind blows where it wishes and you, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Holy Spirit. So it's interesting how he says that like, um, okay, you know the wind like blows this way and that way. He's literally saying people that are born of the Holy Spirit, um, you have no idea where they're going. <laughs> and I can testify to that. There's literally God things that God is telling me to do very specifically. And everybody's sitting here like, this girl's crazy. Like, what is she doing? <laughs> you know? And literally, that is what it is. It's literally like, you don't know where I'm going. You don't know where I'm going next. You don't know where I came from. Um, I don't even know where I'm going or where I'm coming from. And that's exactly every one of the spirit. They're going into different directions. And you don't know what's happening. And so that's what the Lord is saying. Um, okay, so... So he's talking to this Pharisee because the Pharisees have a hard time understanding the things of the Spirit. Um, and he's basically saying, um, are you a teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? He's saying, I say to you, we speak what we know and we testify what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. So it's very important that we receive God's witness. So here he says, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So literally God is saying here, um, he's trying to tell us very simple things. You know, he's trying to tell Nicodemus, this Pharisee, a very simple thing, you know, and he's saying, if you don't understand what I'm saying, what, why um, would I give you more than that? It's the, we need to get the foundation down first. Um, okay, so then he says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, who is Jesus, must be lifted up, that whoever believes in Jesus should not perish, but have eternal life.
Okay, so I'm going to tell you about the serpent in the wilderness because, you know, here Jesus is talking about something interesting. He's saying Moses, who was a, a, a leader, he, um, okay, so basically there was a bunch of people um, that that Moses, that God had used Moses to bring out of the wilderness, to bring out of Egypt, out of slavery, and out of bondage. Um, and basically they all sinned. Some were in sexual immorality. Some of them were in doubt. They were in complete unbelief, complete doubt. And um, they did not believe in the Lord. They didn't believe that God, God's word was true. Um, and because of that, um, God actually sent, they started complaining against God and all this kind of stuff. So God actually sent serpents to um, torment them. And so all of a sudden they were like praying to God. They were like, God, please save us from this because we, we changed our mind. We changed our mind. We're not going to like do this anymore. We're not going to complain against you um, and all this kind of stuff or whatever. Well, what God did was he actually, um, so it says here, Moses lifted up a serpent, serpent in the wilderness. So what God did was he was like, okay, I have, he came up with a savior plan because the truth is, is we have all sinned against God. There are things that we have all done that was against God that was abominable, that was um, not right, that was not okay. There's not a single person that hasn't. And so the thing is, is the serpent has come upon us and eaten us up. Some of us, it's our blessings. Some of us, it's um, our marriages. Some of The devil has done a lot of damages in our life. Some of us have gotten raped. Some of us have gotten... So many things have happened to us, whatever. And um, the serpent has eaten us up. And it's because of our sin. Um, and uh, whatever sin that is, um, you know, uh, that's what has happened to us. But God had a plan in the wilderness. And God basically lifted up a savior-like thing. It's a symbolic thing that he lifted up a serpent. It was a serpent... Um, kind of like a statue or um, what is it called? Serpent. He just says serpent in the wilderness. It was kind of like a statue type thing where he said anybody that would look at this serpent um, would, um, they would become saved. They will no longer be tormented by these serpents that were attacking them. So um, God said, okay, anybody that wants to be saved, anybody that... Um, wants these torments to go away or whatever, look at the serpent. So they did. They looked at the serpent and they were like, um, all of a sudden they were okay. Everything was okay. They were saved and, um, you know, they were no longer tormented by these serpents. So, so here he was saying, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man who is Jesus be lifted up. So Jesus is actually taking the place of that serpent. He is actually our savior. So that serpent was actually something symbolic for Jesus. He is actually the one. Um, you know, when we are um, going through all these troubles in our life, you know, all this stuff, all these curses, um, we were born with so many curses. We were born with such agony, such pain, all this kind of stuff. Um, literally, God is saying, Look to my son. He is your savior. He is the one that will save you. And actually, right now I'm wearing Jesus right now. It's so interesting that I'm wearing this. Um, Philippians 4, 7. Um, and actually the blood, it represents the blood of Jesus as well. So Jesus is literally the answer. He says that whoever believes in Jesus should not perish but have eternal life. And um, what's really interesting is we need to believe the word of the Lord. See, they didn't believe that the Israelite, there was a lot of Israelites. The reason why they got killed in the wilderness was because they didn't believe that God could save them. They didn't believe that God had a um, plan for them. They didn't believe that God was good. They didn't believe that, um, that, uh, um, they didn't believe that uh, he was going to take them to the promised land. That's what I was going to say. And he says, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you, the truth is, is when you go, when you um, die and you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you are bound in everlasting darkness forever. You are bound in chains forever. The truth is, is hell is a real place and I've been there. Jesus showed me that hell was a real place whenever I was in my sin, um, when back when I was in my por um, porn, um, porn star lifestyle, back whenever I was in the sugar daddy lifestyle, back when there was things I was doing that was not okay, it was not okay, and I, w I didn't even believe in God. God took me to hell. He showed me hell was a real place. And let me tell you, when I went to hell, I will never, I know, I don't know how I got back here. Uh, at the time, I, I do know, I know that God saved me. But at the time, I didn't know who took me out of that place. But I knew that was where I was going to be for all of eternity if I did not accept Jesus Christ. And um, so hell has an address. And the truth is, is when we do not receive Jesus as Lord, when we do not surrender everything over to God, when we do not repent for all of our sin, we will end up bound in everlasting chains of darkness um, and eternal fire for all of eternity. That is the truth. And so God is sitting here saying, he's saying, whoever believes in God, you just have to believe in him. You shall not perish, but you will have everlasting life. So right now, we just believe in you, Jesus. We put our trust in you. If you have not put your trust in him, right now, just say, I put my trust in you right now. And the thing is, it says, God so loved the world. God so loved you so much. He loved you so much that he was willing to give his precious son his only begotten son, for to be burnt. Um, Jesus died on a cross. Jesus died a horrific, horrible death. And he did that for you. And actually, Jesus not only did that, he not only did he die on the cross, his whole life was a sacrifice for us. His whole entire life, all the actions that he did, was all for us to save us, to save our life. And, um, and, and here it says, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life for God did not send his son, Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So God did not send Jesus to condemn us. He didn't send Jesus to tell us, you're these horrible sinners, I condemn you, I take you to hell for all of eternity. That's not where God's heart is at. He sent Jesus to come so that we can be saved, so that we can accept him. We can turn from our sin, turn from everything that we've ever known, turn from all of these things, and turn straight to Jesus completely and totally so that we can become saved so it says he who believes in him is not condemned when we do believe in god we will not be condemned but it says but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god so the truth is we believe i just declare right now that we believe in Jesus name and we are not condemned those who are in Jesus Christ will not be condemned so I just declare we are in Jesus Christ and we will not be condemned in the name of Jesus Christ and it says and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil so it says, this is the condemnation. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. We need to come out of agreement. We need to stop loving evil. Do you love being in sexual sin? 
Um, do you love the sinful life that you're in? You need to repent of that. It's literally saying, those that love darkness rather than light, your deeds are evil and condemnation is already upon you. We have to repent of these things. We need to turn to Jesus and believe in him. It says, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Let me say that again. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. So the thing is, the truth is, is that when you're practicing evil, you don't want to come to the light because you have to be exposed. You have to be exposed. And here's the thing. Most people don't want to be exposed. They don't because, um, you know, it's painful. It is painful. When people confront your sin, it's not a fun thing. It's not fun. It says, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. So I just declare the spirit of truth to come upon us right now in Jesus' name. I declare that we are the ones that do the truth and we will come to the lights, that our deeds will come clearly seen in Jesus' name. And then here's John, John the Baptist, he answered and he's saying, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You cannot receive anything good unless it comes from the Spirit of God, comes from heaven. Everything that's good comes from God. Everything that's good comes from God and Him alone. God, we surrender. Jesus, I surrender my all to you. To you, Jesus. We just surrender all to you, Father. So it says, He must increase but I must decrease. Here's the problem. We have become so full of ourselves. God says we will become lovers of self. Are you a lover of yourself rather than a lover of God? It says he must increase, but we must decrease. We must decrease ourselves. It's not about us. It's not about you. This world is not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. He must increase inside of us and we must decrease. It says, he who comes from above is above all. So Jesus, because he has come down on earth to die on the cross for us, and he rose the third day, he is above all. He is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. It says, but he who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. So literally, um, if you see someone that comes from earth, they're totally earthly. <laughs> it's sensual and it's demonic. It says the father loves the son who is Jesus and has given all things into his hand. Everything was given into Jesus' hands. God gave everything into the hands of Jesus. He says, he who believes in the Son, Jesus, has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Don't let the wrath of God abide on him. He Believe in the Son. Believe in Jesus and you will have everlasting life. If you don't believe in Jesus, life is not in you. It's not. You don't have any life. You're spiritually dead. You're a walking, talking, dead person. You have no life in you. And you're not going to heaven. You're not going to experience eternal life. And it says, but the wrath of God abides in you. You want to know why your life is going so wrong? It's because you're in contrary of the Holy Spirit. 
because you have rejected God's for so long. When you reject God, the wrath of God has come upon you. Um, okay, I want to read something else here too. Um, in Psalms. Okay. It says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord. And I'm just praying that right now, God. Bring back our captivity, O Lord. Bring us from the chains of darkness to everlasting life, to resurrection and life. As the streams of the south, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually go forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. God sees your tears. He bottles up all your tears. He sees what you're going through. And he wants to save you. He wants to save you. He wants to save you. And then I also want to, um, Ezekiel chapter 22, this is really good. Where he says, The people of the land have used oppressions. They have committed robbery. They have mistreated the poor and needy. And they wrongfully oppressed this, the stranger. So I sought, God is speaking here. He's saying, I, I'm, he's seeking. He's like, I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that, we sh that I should not destroy it. But I have found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads. God is looking for people to intercede. If you have prodigal sons and daughters, if you are saved, and yet you um, know people that are not saved, God is saying he's looking for someone to stand in the gap for them. He is looking for someone to pray for them. God wants to save them so much, more than you do. He wants to save them. He wants to save them. Actually, last night I had a dream about my cousin. And I, and I had a dream that my cousin, it was like, I felt like the Lord was sharing with me, my cousin is going to come to me. And the Lord is trying to save her. The Lord is trying to save my family members. The Lord is trying to get to them. And he wants me to stand in the gap for my family members. He wants me to stand in the gap for my husband. He wants me to stand in the gap for my future generations. He wants me to stand in the gap on behalf of my land. He wants you to stand in gap for these people. And if you have not received Jesus as Lord, just say, Jesus, I confess all my sin. Whatever sin God is revealing to you, just say, I repent. Turn from it. Turn from it. If you are stealing, steal no longer. If you're lying, lie no longer. Whatever it is that you're doing, if you're in sexual sin, no longer do those things. Turn from them and say, God, I repent. And say, Jesus, I accept you as Lord and my Savior. And then also um, say, I believe in you, Jesus. Put all your trust in him. Say, God, I trust in you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. And I lean not on my own understanding. Yes, and I just declare that, Father God, every single person that hears this message, you would just set them free, set them free, that they become saved, that they would believe in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. Mwah.